Hey everybody, it's Rishi Agarwal. Today I want to talk about low bar collapse. Low bar collapse just means complete deflation of the airspace in a lobe. And it differs from consolidation because in consolidation, the air is replaced by another substance like blood, pus, or edema. In collapse or atelectasis, it's not replaced by anything, it's just deflated. Let's take a look at some examples starting with the right upper lobe. This is the classic appearance of a right upper lobe collapse. Remember from anatomy that the minor fissure is supposed to be about right here. But in this case, it's displaced superiorly, and it's all the way up here. Notice also that we lose the contour of the right superior mediastinum because we have something of the same density, the collapsed lung, obscuring it. In this patient, there's another feature. Not only do we have lobar collapse, but there's also this slight bulge centrally here. So the contour of the minor fissure has this sort of S shape. This is the S sign of golden. You see this sign when you have lobar collapse, and it's mostly in the right upper lobe, but the central bulge represents a mass causing obstruction of the bronchus. There's one more final sign on this chest radiograph, and that's this slight contour irregularity of the diaphragm. This is something called the juxtaphrenic peak sign. If you remember from anatomy that the visceral and parietal pleura come together at the hilum. The extension of that pleural junction is the inferior pulmonary ligament, and it tethers the hilum down to the diaphragm. When you have volume loss in the upper lobes, the hilum retracts superiorly, and it causes tenting of the inferior pulmonary ligament, causing the juxtaphrenic peak. On the lateral view, there's this triangular wedge of tissue, which represents the collapsed lobe. The posterior edge here is the major fissure, which is pulled up. And this horizontal edge is the minor fissure, which is also pulled up. If we look at the CT, you could see that the right upper lobe stops abruptly. And this is called the bronchial cutoff sign. And if we narrow the windows, you can make out a mass that is obstructing that bronchus, causing collapse of the lobe. If we look at the mediastinum, you can see that there are also enlarged lymph nodes, which represent metastatic disease. And here's the coronal image of the collapsed right upper lobe, with this being the minor fissure. Here's a case of right middle lobe collapse, which in my opinion is one of the harder lobar collapses to get on x-rays. Our clues here are that we have this hazy opacity in the expected location of the right middle lobe. And if we zoom in, we lose the right heart border because the collapsed middle lobe abuts the heart border. We also have this straight edge here in the lung. When you see a straight edge in the lung, usually that means it's a fissure. The real clue here is on the lateral though. On the lateral view, you can see that we have this wedge of soft tissue that's bordered inferiorly by this line here, which is the major fissure being displaced superiorly, and superiorly, this is the minor fissure, which is displaced downward. Here's the patient a few weeks ago, and this is the major fissure in its normal position, and this right here is the minor fissure. Here's the sagittal CT showing the collapsed right middle lobe. This is the minor fissure, and this is the major fissure. On the coronals, the right middle lobe looks like this triangular or wedge-shaped bit of soft tissue that abuts the right heart border. So this is right middle lobe collapse. Here's a patient with right lower lobe collapse. This patient has COPD and endobronchial valves were placed intentionally in the segmental bronchi of the right lower lobe, to cause the right lower lobe to collapse. So our clues here are that we have this triangular opacity that extends from the hilum to the diaphragm, and we have inferior retraction of the right hilum. If I zoom in, you could see the endobronchial valves there, and you can make out partially the right heart border, but we lose the medial aspect of the right hemidiaphragm. Compare that to the pre-op study where we have the right hemidiaphragm more clearly. The lateral view for lower lobe collapse is not super helpful, but it does show a hazy opacity overlying the spine in the retrocardiac clear space. Here's the CT. If we follow this bronchus, this is the bronchus intermedius, 
and then it branches into the right lower lobe. And you can see that these segmental bronchi contain the endobronchial valves, and this is the major fissure, which makes all of this the collapsed right lower lobe. Here's what it looks like on the coronal images. So this is the collapsed lower lobe here. And notice also that this is the minor fissure, which is displaced inferiorly as the middle lobe tries to take up the space that was once occupied by the lower lobe. This is another patient with right lower lobe collapse. And again, we see this triangular opacity representing the collapsed lobe going from the hilum to the diaphragm. We have elevation of the right hemidiaphragm, indicating volume loss. We have preservation of the right heart border. And although we have preservation of the right hemidiaphragm here, if we look on the lateral view, you could see that the posterior aspect of the diaphragm is obscured. Notice also on the lateral view that the collapsed lobe is not well demarcated. It just shows up as a hazy opacity overlying the spine. This patient has both right middle and lower lobe collapse. Notice again that we have this triangular opacity that goes from the hilum to the diaphragm. And if we zoom in, you'll see that we lose both the right heart border and the right hemidiaphragm. This border right here is not the diaphragm. This is the minor fissure. If we go to the lateral view, this right here is the collapsed middle lobe on top of the diaphragm. And notice posteriorly, Again, we have just haziness behind the heart, but we don't have the posterior aspect of the right hemidiaphragm. This is the left hemidiaphragm. In this patient, because we have right middle and lower lobe collapse, you would guess that the obstruction would have to be in the bronchus intermedius. And if we go to the CT, what you'll see is that the trachea is patent. This is the right main bronchus, right upper lobe bronchus. That's the bronchus intermedius, and if we continue to scroll down, you could see that the bronchus intermedius is completely occluded. And if we continue to scroll, this is the collapsed right middle lobe, and this is the collapsed right lower lobe. On the coronal images, this is the collapsed right lower lobe. Notice that we're posterior here because we can see the spine, which corresponds with this opacity. And if we scroll forward, this is the collapsed right middle lobe, which corresponds with this opacity. All right, let's take a look at the left lung. Here's a patient with left upper lobe collapse. On first glance, the most striking abnormality is that you see a diffuse haziness throughout the left hemithorax, and that actually represents the left upper lobe that's flattened against the anterior chest wall. Notice also that the left hilum is elevated, and that we have a very subtle juxtaphrenic peak sign here, as well as elevation of the left hemidiaphragm compared to the right. Another sign is that we lose the left heart border, because remember the collapsed left upper lobe abuts the left heart. And then one final clue on the frontal view is that there's this sort of crescentic lucency adjacent to the aortic arch. This is something called the Luftzickel sign, and it represents a bit of the left lower lobe that's interposed between the collapsed lung and the aortic arch. The lateral view is much more straightforward. We see a well-defined opacity along the anterior aspect of the chest, which represents the collapsed left upper lobe, and this posterior border here is the major fissure. On CT, this is the collapsed left upper lobe, and as we scroll down, you could see that there's a little bit of the left lower lobe that comes between the aortic arch and the collapsed left upper lobe. And this is what gives us the Luftzickel sign. Here's what it looks like on the sagittal images. This is a patient with left lower lobe collapse. This looks very similar to right lower lobe collapse. What we have is a triangular opacity superimposed over the heart going from the hilum to the diaphragm, and we have obscuration of a portion of the left hemidiaphragm. On the lateral view, this is the left hemidiaphragm here, and you can see again that a portion of it is obscured posteriorly. Also notice on the lateral view that the collapsed lobe is not very well demarcated. 
all we really see is a hazy opacity behind the heart. Here's what it looks like on the coronal CT. It looks very similar to the right lower lobe that I just showed you. We have a well demarcated triangular opacity that represents the collapsed lung. And this is the major fissure, which is depressed inferiorly. So those were the patterns of lobar collapse. If you have any questions about this topic or any other thoracic radiology topic, let me know in the comments below. Thanks.